Greetings and welcome to my modeling bench for a uh, mill and my 28 and Havoc build for yet another group build on the Facebooks. Um, this time for a different helicopter group that I'm in than well, the last group build. Uh, but uh, as you can see, I have already started the thing. Um, uh, had shot some uh, introduction video into this where I went through the spruce and stuff, but uh, looking back at the footage, um, I did not really like the way I sounded in that. Uh, sounded like a teenage girl, uh, really hyper, and talking nonsense or something like that. But anyways, uh, this is a rebel kit as you saw in 172nd scale. Russian chopper, uh, building it uh, straight out of box like I normally do, but um, yeah, I want to go through the kit a little bit uh, using the instructions as a uh, thing of a jiggy. As in, in the box you get only uh, two sprues of plastic that you can see right there, and there's some clear parts, two pieces, a canopy and a uh, radar sh front thing, a majigi, I think. But uh, yeah, overall it's a pretty nice looking kit uh, with recessed panel lines. There were some raised rivet detail, not all of it, mostly just on the wings right here, or the winglets or whatever you call it. But anyways, uh, so far it's been quite an enjoyable build. The cockpit is pretty... Uh, lacking in the detail department I guess but it does have some nice decals for the instrument panels there's another one inside there that you can't see and yes I know it's Russian but it's supposed to be black like that it's not that that uh, loud teal color that most Russian aircraft have it's black and we're building it as a uh, Russian demonstrator chopper so basically, as it was in the box art, uh, brown and green camo. Um, what else? Yeah, it's coming together pretty nicely. Although, as you can see on these parts, these are the air intakes and exhausts for the engines. Uh, I had to use some putty on there. And there were some sink marks in the plastic as well, as most notably seen here. And yeah, you can see how it's on both sides of the seam like that. Uh, yep, it's because the entire like edges of the of the thing. I don't know if it's the plastic reacting to the uh, the cement or if it's just the molding. But you get like a, a trench like effect on along the 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 seam lines there. But um. It's still quite an enjoyable build. The uh, the sanding is all very accessible uh, places, so it doesn't take a lot of effort. And this here is the main uh, gun turret assembly. Also, there was a, the ejector pin mark going on right there, so that wasn't puttying. And there are some injector pin marks on the side of the gun and a sink mark on the other side that you can't see because it's in there. But I did putty it anyways. And all the way around the seam lines on the ammo crates as well. And there was a horrible uh, mold line going across here that I had to shave down just to make it fit properly inside the fuselage. And uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So... It's one of those deals where I am just building it uh, with, while the kids are watching the cartoons on the Saturday morning, Saturday morning, and uh, yeah, just really having fun with this build. Uh, hoping it's gonna be relatively quick, but it's gonna take some planning when it comes to the uh, painting process. So I'm not gonna put on the pylons on under the wings here just yet because. Uh, uh, the camouflage kind of 
goes across like all over the place and you need to put like three colors on each pylon so it's easier just to paint those off the chopper so yeah that's just pretty basic I mean yeah the one trick that I did that I wanted to show you guys was uh, this piece right here it goes under the chin of the helicopter and you're whiting out because my light is so bright but uh, I think this is like a radar something or other I'm not really good with those um, I painted the inside uh, light blue if you can see some of that and I'm hoping that gives the effect when I have put the clear part in front here that if you want look into it you'll see like a blue color so I won't have to paint the lenses does that make any sense anyways uh, I'm not sure how that's gonna work out but I'm guessing it's gonna be all right uh, hoping that at least so yeah uh, that's where I'm at at the beginning of this video sorry for not uh, posting the other one I was just uh, so obnoxious I think and uh, yeah I couldn't stand the sound of my own voice in that video but anyways you didn't miss much it's just a bunch of uh, one build plastic nothing painted just going through the box uh, much as I did uh, yeah so okay so it's currently Sunday and uh, I got a message Benz because I'm working on a lot of things at one time but um yeah so working on the uh, havoc I forgot the name of the chopper real quick I got it all glued up and uh, sanded and puttied sanded and puttied even or in a different order but uh, it's actually coming together quite nicely now um, uh, yeah forgot what I was gonna say but I got all putty in all the right places now and uh, I have all the seam lines sanded down and uh, if you can see it had quite a sick, big sink going on between these two parts right here and a little bit going on right there but um, it's pretty smooth right now after uh, plenty of puttying and sanding and I thought I'd mention this but uh, this antenna right here and this door in here which you can't see because everything's whiting out these two parts are the best fitting parts that I've probably ever seen in any model it just clicked right into place and it's perfectly smooth this is of course a door so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth but it's quite smooth anyways and uh, yeah anyways I uh, just turned on the camera right here because I thought I'd mention that um, I'm masking the canopy which is probably the last part that I'll do before I paint this now uh, having it almost ready for paint yes I'm building a ship model uh, don't make fun of me please but uh, yeah I'm masking the canopy now and I got this box here because I'm gonna show you the way I'm masking this canopy now usually as you've seen in my videos I use the parafilm M thing in a jiggy but this canopy doesn't have any like contour curves or anything it's just straight cut straight cuts all around every single piece of window is straight so it's just quite easy easily enough uh, masked with just regular masking tape. This is not regular masking tape. This is a uh, thin stuff like Tamiya But I bought it at the paint store Because it's cheaper, but anyways, yeah in order to order to see where to cut this thing. I have this uh, flashlight app in my phone flashlight and uh, I'm probably gonna wreck your eyes with this but flip it upside down like this and it's quite too bright as you can see so I got this box from uh, Q-tips or cotton buds and as you can see it kind of diffuses the light when you put it on top there and that way I can put the canopy on top and it's lost in the whiteness but the backlighting 
actually helps me see where to cut the tape. So that's a quick tip for you guys. I thought I'd share. I just came up with it. Actually, yeah, I was kind of influenced by I heard some people actually just use their phone like this. Got something uh, white background going on and bam, you cut away. But I'm kind of par paranoid and I don't want to drop the knife blade or anything into my screen and such. So using the flashlight app and uh, the Q-tip box it is working out quite nicely. And that's the way I'm going to finish this. Turning on the camera real quick here because I kind of forgot. Um, as you can see, uh, it's already been primed and pre-shaded. And I painted the the hell hellblau. Why am I saying it in German? The light blue uh, underneath color has been painted. And uh, yeah, so just thought I'd show you what it looks like when it's uh, appreciated like this. Didn't do the best job of it, but it's functional. And then I've been looking at the colors that are supposed to be on there for this scheme. And I don't have the exact same correct colors. It's supposed to be silk green or something like that. But I have this hemp beige color which is uh, close enough for me and then olive drab US olive drab not US just olive drab I'm sorry and uh, yeah so I'm gonna throw those two colors on hopefully tonight and uh, be a step closer to finishing this thing so this is what it looks like uh, mostly painted up it's been a few days since I turned the camera on last time and uh, yeah, haven't really been working on this, but it's coming along now. I gave it a clear coat for bed yesterday and uh, painted all the details and stuff before that. So she's ready for decals, I guess, which I have right here. Yeah, so, nice cut here, uh, I kind of forgot to turn on the camera for a while, <clears throat> and, uh, this is how she looks as of now, uh, she's not quite done yet though, as you can see she's still quite glossy, so I still have to do the matte coat and, uh, paint in the, the navigation lights and such. And uh, as you can see, I've already done a mistake that I did not correct. The upper half of the of the rotors is supposed to be the sky blue, and underneath is supposed to be black. But I don't really mind my mistakes <laughs> that much, so I let let it uh, be like that. Um, more mistakes that I have noticed that I did, um, like breaking this stuff off, there's an antenna right there that I keep hitting with my fingers, um, anyways, uh, on the pylons here, the bottom half of those, that nobody's ever gonna see that well, but they're supposed to be silver, and also the rocket tube rack there is supposed to be silver but I painted that sky blue as well and <clears throat> I've given it some some uh, wash I did a little pin washing last night not too much because I don't want to make, make it too dirty but um a little bit though and uh, yeah just thought I'd stop by and uh, turn the camera on for a bit because I haven't done that for a while now. And uh, actually I wanted also to, just to put it in the video that I missed the deadline for the group build because I went with my family away for the Easter holiday that has just passed. So yeah, I chose family time over a modeling time, which you always should do. 
but it doesn't matter. I'm still uh, moving forward and almost finished this bird. So next time I'm going to turn on the camera, which hopefully will, will be later tonight, I'll have it all done and finished. So I'm just going to go shake up the matte coat and uh, yeah, finish this thing. So yeah, uh, she's all done now, I guess. I got all the masking off and all the navigation lights painted and uh, yeah, everything's done and dusted, I guess. This spins around. I don't know what to say about, <laughs> actually about this kid. She's not perfect. She's actually far from perfect if you count the rivets. Um, she looks nice though and I'm quite happy with it the way it is uh, with these couple of errors that I did and talked about uh, just moments ago, I guess, on the video. Now, uh, the props to spin, the if I can show this on this angle, the gun turret spins, this guy spins, whatever this thing is, and it has some glass. And I painted the insides blue just for some effect, I guess, and it works out quite fine. But usually they fly around with the uh, glass pointing backwards, like that. And uh, what else to say about this kit? It was quite a nice kit from Ravel. Um, of course you watched the video, so you've seen where I did the putty work and stuff. And I'm actually going to take this off because it's easier to spin it around and show you guys. Now, I did some weathering on the back side here. Perhaps I did a bit too much of the exhaust streaks going down the tail boom there. And uh, from pictures, I saw that it also had like a little bit of dirt going on from underneath here. Uh, the turbine exhaust or something, I guess. I don't know. But I do like my helicopters a little bit dirty around the exhaust because. Ever since I saw that Icelandic Super Puma fly past me, uh, really low, looking really dirty from a long flight, I just fell in love with that look, I guess. So yeah, I did a little bit of dirt there as well. And uh, the decals were uh, really nice, went down real nice. Uh, I did choose to paint these tiny little red dots here instead of using the decal with a huge uh, carrier film going from one red dot to the other and the same on this side. And uh, I have only one complaint and it's a tiny one though for me at least and you can't really tell maybe on the video but you can see on the star here I can see on the star here if you are looking at this in person that is a slightly ever so tinyly out of uh, the register but we make do I guess and uh, we end up with a pretty nice looking model I guess I guess I think so at least so yeah I guess this is the end then for this I'll put up uh, the regular slideshow at the end, trying to frame this so you guys can see this more pre sitting pretty. And yes, it does look like it has a lot of sag on the rotor blades, but uh, looking at some pictures on the internet, these things have really droopy rotor blades. So I think it's quite accurate the way I I managed to do that, but anyways, here things, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> my tongue is failing me. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I uh, hope you stick around for the next video whenever that might come out. Uh, thanks for watching, and keep on, keep on, keep on. Bye. 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 Bye.